Okay, let me get this lined up here. And this is perpetual energy device number three that I'm going to be going over based on magnetism. Make sure I got this up where it needs to be. Okay, let me put my hand out here and see where it's going to end up. All right, perpetual energy device number three. Based on magnetism, I'm going to align magnet to, uh, magnets in such a way that we're going to use uh, two circles. One circle is going to be stationary and contain magnets and facing one direction. The other circle is going to be, um, let me see if I can get this right, okay? The other one's going to be kind of like this and come around like that. Probably not exactly the scale. But one's going to be um, allowed to rotate. The other one's going to be stationary. We're going to have magnets on this one. Let's see if I can do this right. Say it's aiming this way. The one on this one's aiming that way. They're side by side in such a way that when these two magnets line up, this one right here with this one right here, it's going to create a force that's going to want to propel this one this way. As it spins around, this magnet gets to this point right here, and they line up in such a way that now they're opposing. They have the same, the ones that would uh, force each other apart, they would oppose each other. They, uh, how do they call it, instead of attract, they oppose each other or make each other want to move away from each other. This one's going to move away this way. But by the time this one gets around to a point where it's no longer affected by this one, say right over here, there's another magnet right behind that. Then when it gets to this, that as this is spinning around, this one goes to here, there's another one behind it. And they're going to line up again so that they, this one wants to push this circle by this magnet right here. Wants, this magnet is going to force this one to move this way, moving the, uh, I should say disc actually, or, or circular piece of wood, whatever you've got your magnets mounted on. But then um, after this one moves around, well this one's going to move around as well. This one's going to move to here, and that one is going to move to there. you got another one behind this one that lines up with that one, and the process continues. So you have magnets all the way around this thing, okay, that are constantly, as this wheel, this wheel, there we go, wheel, <laughs> as if I shouldn't have known that term, is moving around. It's constantly having force exerted upon it to spin this direction, because this magnet is aiming this way, this magnet is aiming that way, so when it comes around they line up, they want to push each other apart and want to keep this wheel spinning. So these certain magnets are all the way around, okay? But then, just one magnet is not very efficient. So let's have more magnets on here doing the same thing. They line up with these as these are being spun around. They're aimed in such a way, they're angled, so they face each other at a certain uh, point such that they oppose each other to, for the purpose of spinning this wheel in one direction. Okay, so we're going to have magnets all on this one too. Okay, so I don't know if you can uh, uh, understand the design just from the description that I've given you, but one, again, one wheel is stationary. The other one's set up in such a way that this wheel can spin. And then when that's happening, when we finally get this, the magnets correct, to the point that one wheel is going to continuously spin because of the force exerted, the opposing forces between the sets of magnets on this wheel and this wheel, we're going to put a generator right here in the middle such that the force uh, that it's going to exert on this wheel is less, less friction or less tendency to slow this wheel down to a point that it's going to stop. Okay? So the force of the magnets uh, working to move this wheel around. We want a generator that's big enough to create at least some electricity. Any electricity, as long as this wheel is going to continuously spin, any electricity, any small, even the smallest uh, generator that we put on there, is going to create electricity. And that electricity can be used for something. You know, it's a minuscule charge. I mean, the, the mo most smallest of charge. A little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. As long as this creates some electricity without creating so much drag on here that it stops the wheel, 
as long as it's creating some electricity, we can route that electricity to these magnets on the stationary wheel. Okay? And so as soon as this wheel starts spinning, because of the arrangement of the magnets opposing each other from each wheel, we take the electricity from a very, very small generator that creates less drag uh, than what the force that the magnets are exerting upon each other to move this wheel. We've still got movement, but it's not going to create so much drag, in other words, that it's, gonna, it's not going to stop this wheel from spinning. We take the electricity and run it into the wheels, or excuse me, into the magnets on the stationary wheel, well, then we're going to have more powerful magnets, and they're going to exert even more force trying to spin this wheel even faster, which is going to in turn spin this generator even faster, which is in turn going to create more electricity to put back into these stationary magnets, which is in turn going to create uh, more force through higher magnetism from these magnets pushing the wheels, uh, the wheel with the, the magnets on the wheel that's spinning. Can you see the progression that as the generator creates electricity, it empowers the magnets that are already making this wheel spin. The magnets in the stationary wheel are already making this wheel spin. Electricity is created, a little, as little as it is, is going to increase the power of the stationary magnets to spin the rotating magnets even faster, which creates more power, which makes these stationary magnets more powerful, which exerts more force on the spinning wheel, which causes it to spin even faster, which creates more electricity in the generator, which creates more power for the stationary magnets, which creates more force on the spinning wheel, causing it to spin faster, and the progression it just keeps going. So you see, this can be um, not only a uh, device in itself that creates perpetual energy, that can be siphoned off, as long as it creates just a little bit more electricity than what we need to run this, it can be used in another device that does the same thing, which already it's going to be able to move by itself. But then, if, uh, just like in the perpetual energy device number one design, you have subsequent devices that collectively, as you keep shunting energy from one device to the next, the extra energy to the next, to the next, to the next, the accumulated energy of all the devices, eventually you're going to get a device that's purely ran on all the previous devices, and you get 100% use of whatever electricity you get out of the, uh, a subsequent device from the generator, you can use every bit that's, that's being generated for whatever purpose you want. Also, this design may be incorporated into the device on number one. The perpetual energy device number one, you remember it's like the merry-go-round design? Well, this is a circle. If I incorporate this into that first design, what I would have is a secondary disk underneath the, quote, merry-go-round that has the magnets underneath. and of both of them so that the magnets are also helping to propel or rotate that spinning disc or that merry-go-round. See, so this would enhance that first design on the potential energy device number one. Thanks for your time.